Today's video is sponsored by Sprocket 365. Finally, create a robust knowledge base in SharePoint. Learn more at sprocket365.com. In today's episode, I'm going to check out how to create what we call a break glass account in Microsoft Entra ID. And believe me, if you're a Microsoft 365 admin, you need this. Greetings everyone, Andy here. So nice to see you and I really do appreciate you uh, stopping by. I get a letter or an email every week uh, informing me that somebody's got a problem with their Microsoft 365 account or Microsoft Entra admin account. And for this, I cannot recommend enough having what we call a break glass account. So if all else fails, you've got this emergency back door into your system that you can get in, that you've secured with really good security. And we're gonna talk exactly what you need to do in order to, for you to get that up and running today. I cannot reiterate the dangers of not having this type of account. It can really save you an awful lot of grief. But as you can appreciate, it's got to be carefully handled and carefully set up and also carefully managed as well. So we're going to talk about that in this episode. So stay tuned. Uh, and I think you really will get a lot out of this. Now, if you haven't subscribed, of course, we'd love to have you on board. So bump that subscribe button up there and come on board and join uh, our learning community. And if you'd like some more, then why not consider signing up to my Patreon site? Here, if you show me a little love, I'll show you lots of Microsoft, full Microsoft courses, that is, as well as monthly Zoom calls and a lot more as well. And if you've got questions and comments about this and any of my other sessions, as always, you know what to do. Get those down below. So I think without any further ado, let's jump in and have a look at how to create and manage a break glass account in Microsoft Entra ID. OK, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a user account. So I'm coming into Entra ID and I'm going to kind of come into users. And of course, you can create either a new user or you can create a new guest user. Um, in this case, I'm gonna call the user something different like enable in an emergency number A or letter A. Um, just a quick tip, I would use the on Microsoft account rather than your domain name. I've just found that in the past, if you use domain names, things can go horribly wrong. You'll notice it gives you the option to do an auto-generated password. I'm going to uncheck that checkbox and I'm going to paste in an extremely long password, uh, which is just randomly generated. And of course, make sure that you keep a copy of that somewhere for safety. I'm going to enable this account. And just for security reasons, I am not going to enter any details about the account into the contact information. Although for the usage location, I would recommend that you choose the country that you're in. So I'm just choosing the UK. Um, do you want the user to be a member of an admin unit, a group, or in this case, I'm going to add in a role. And of course, the role that we want to add the user to is the global administrator role. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to click on that. Now, it's worth mentioning that you should have at least two break glass accounts. Um, so this is the first of my accounts. And that's the first thing that you need to do is simply create him. So the next thing then is uh, conditional access. So here in conditional access, this is just an example. As you can see, Microsoft are, are enforcing this multi-factor authentication for kind of all users and for admins. And pretty soon this will be for everybody right across the board. But what I want to do here is I'm excluding um, uh, I'm excluding a particular user. Uh, and in this case, it's my user that I've just created. Now, what you could do is you could, of course, exclude him from this policy altogether and create an additional policy, which is probably the one that I would actually do in reality. So after excluding him from this policy, what I would then do is you can then obviously at the moment it's excluding him from things like multi-factor authentication policies. 
What you're more likely to do, though, is create an admin policy that's probably using phishing resistant passwordless credentials. Just to remind you that you any policies that you should create, um, you can create in reporting only mode just to test them. And of course, that lasts for up to 90 days. So again, um, you can see in this case, if you choose a policy that says all users, be very careful that you don't lock yourself out of that policy. It's always a good idea to exclude um, users or administrators from that policy. OK, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to click on save. Just a point, by the way, any directory synchronization accounts should also be excluded from password policies as these are just pretty much service accounts anyway. Now, just on the subject of passwordless and phishing resistant credentials, just so that you know, a good idea is if you come into the likes of access controls here, as you can see that this particular policy is set up for multi-factor authentication. Now, if I just deselect that option, um, one of the options that we do have is this phishing resistant MFA. And this is really good because it can include a YubiKey or pass key as we now know them as. So I would definitely recommend that as something that you can use in order to authenticate. So you can have that with a password and also a pass key, which you can then keep in a safe, which is really useful. Um, so definitely think about that. So in, in this demo, I'm just going to go ahead with the uh, basic MFA. But in reality, when you're setting up this account, I would definitely go for a phishing resistant solution, especially if you're using a device, because then you can include, for example, certificate based uh, authentication as well. Just to remind you how to set that up, if you go into authentication strengths in Enter ID, and you can see that we've got the phishing resistant policies, you've got multi factor authentication and passwordless. So you can, of course, you can create your own strength there as well using FIDO, Certificate, Windows Hello for Business, simply by just clicking that uh, options there and then just add a name and a description there to the policy. And you can use that then in your conditional access policy. But if you actually scroll down the list, you can see that some of the other options, are, in my opinion, are quite weak. And um, please note that we also have the new QR code, uh, in, which is currently in public preview, which I featured uh, in a previous episode. So uh, all in all, pretty nice. Um, you would definitely go in here. You would create your authentication strength and you would then assign that to your um, admin account uh, via conditional access. Today's video is sponsored by Sprocket 365. Finally, you can create a robust knowledge base in SharePoint. Visit them today at Sprocket 365 and discover exactly what Sprocket 365 can offer you. Not only can it help you with document management, it can fill in the gaps where SharePoint doesn't reach. You can create wiki style menus as well as assign and track required reading for your staff. So if you'd like to try Sprocket 365 for free, then check it out today at sprocket365.com. So as you can imagine, uh, as well as conditional access, there is one important feature that you need to enable. However, this does require a P2 license, and this is identity protection. Identity protection is designed to really protect your highly sensitive accounts, and of course, this definitely clarifies as one of those. So you can see I've got a group here. This is, for example, my senior leadership within my organization. And what I want to do is I want to scroll down and of course, uh, add in my enable in an emergency account. And you can see I've, at the moment I've created just one emergency account, but you would probably add both in there as well bearing in mind that the second account you would use with phishing resistant credentials, so different types of login. So likewise, as well as the user risk policy, I'm also going to add this user into the sign in risk uh, policy as well. So I'm just going to bring them in and that will then add that in. Um, so just click on save and there we go. We're now done. 
Now, um, just it, it's really quite a useful feature identity protection. Um, it, however, if you've got business premium and an E3 license, you don't get have access to that. So you would need to um, add that in. But you can see it does give you access to things like the risky sign in reports and the risky user reports. Um, but if you don't have access to those, then okay, it's all is not lost. Of course, we still have the useful sign-in logs here as well. Um, and the sign-in logs, of course, give you all the details of who, who you know who's signing in, where they're coming in from, the location, for example, the device that they're using, the web browser that they're using, and how they're authenticating as well. So in this case, they're using multi-factor authentication. If conditional access policies are hitting them and likewise if there are any conditional accesses policies that are running in uh, for example reporting only mode so as i said really really super useful um, in addition of course we also have the audit logs as well by the way just a quick tip definitely take the id of your enable in an emergency account that can be useful for uh, for example um, PowerShell commandlets. Now, just a quick mention, if you're looking for documentation on all of this, you can find it uh, in this document, Managing Emergency Access Accounts in Microsoft Entra ID um, on learn.microsoft.com. Definitely check it out. So there we go. Talks about creating the new uh, admin account. Make sure that the account is a global admin. Make sure it's excluded from any conditional access policies or if you are going to use conditional access policies, probably best to have two accounts. One that you have a super long password, and of course you need to keep that secure in a safe or somewhere very, very valuable. And the second one you might want to use something like a phishing resistant passwordless credentials. Um, but this talks about how to configure the, uh, the, so this talks about how to configure the account um, how, and also how to use tools like log analytics uh, to monitor access to the account as well. And again, here you can see you've got the complete step-by-step -step guide there that walks you through the whole thing. And as you can see, once you're monitoring it, you can then see uh, its usage. And that is really super useful. So this is a really nice um, article and it's definitely a, a one that you must uh, check out if you are a global admin within your organization. So there you go, managing emergency access accounts in Entra ID. So there you have it, a break glass account in Microsoft Entra ID as well as Microsoft 365. Absolutely critical that you get one of those in place um, to avoid any kind of mishaps. Okay. Hey, listen, I really hope you enjoyed today's session. If you did, give me a big thumbs up, bump the like button up there, and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Questions and comments, as always, get those down below, and I really do appreciate you dropping by. That's it for this time. I'll see you soon. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.